Uh, so they described this uh, million dollar challenge, the dash for the cash. There's several different names being used. One of them that is absolutely incorrect is an all-star race, um, but some people are saying that. Uh, the, the only thing that's really been consistent about this event is all of the credentials and all of everything uh, for this event. Uh, and, you know, it doesn't matter what it is. It says made for TV underneath it. And I asked on Twitter, you know, uh, of everyone, what do you think? I mean, was this, was this a good TV product? And it's, I mean, I, I would probably say no. Um, and, you know, I think we kind of expected, it was either going to go one or two ways with the tire management, right? It was either going to be an absolute banger or it was going to be kind of what we saw there, which was a runaway by one Alex Pillow. Um, but I guess in the spirit of calling it an all-star race, uh, arguably the best driver in the series won the cash. Um, so, I, I, you know, I, we'll discuss this as the video goes on. So we did grab a couple of drivers, uh, obviously a much reduced field versus a regular IndyCar race, but we got a couple of guys you probably haven't heard of given the tight t TV window, or heard from given the tight TV window. Tire saving in the first heat, did that remind you a little bit of uh, stock car racing? Yeah, yeah, it's true, it's true, it's true. Yeah, uh, luckily, we had a problem with our last set of tires, mm. a huge vibration, oh, wow. uh, I don't know what happened there. It's a shame because the car was really good the whole weekend. I, I was really fast during the hit one and, and during the, the practice. Uh, so, but we finished at top 10, my first top 10. I'm happy, mixed it with the top teams too. So we had a really good weekend so far. Yeah, you mentioned that both cars were fast all week long. I mean, what was, what was the difference here versus everywhere else? We are improving a lot. We, we were battling for a podium in Laguna, in St. Pete we were really close to the top 10 before my mistake. Uh, I think we are improving a lot. The team is improving a lot. Give Roman in the team is a, is a big advantage, a big step forward. So I think we are in a really good moment, improving. Close to the top 10 is not easy in Indigar. What's your evaluation of this event from the driver's seat? Hey, it's been a great event so far. Uh, you know, obviously a little bit different. As a rookie, I'm thankful for you know the the amount of testing that we had coming here as well, and even having the weekend where obviously you practice quality, you practice races. Um, you know, it's great for me. And I think as a series as well, it's kind of fun that they try to try to explore different avenues and see what we can do to to spice it all up. So it's been a, it's been a good weekend so far. And what was your kind of strategy? Was it tire saving or was it go go like hell? What was what was the the or were you in a middle ground somewhere? Yeah, well, it was go like hell, and then everybody else started to tire save, and I think we were kind of like the last one not to do it. So then we decided to bail on the you know push like hell strategy and start to to tire save kind of halfway through, um, and then in the in the other one it was just about you know managing whatever you had left, and obviously you got some guys charging hard, and some people I think started to fall off a little bit, but we were kind of in that middle ground. So yeah, happy to walk away, but I think sixth or whatever we finished. Okay, so here's where things get a little bit you know, difficult because, you know, I'm not someone who necessarily just always wants to be bashing things and certainly I think focusing on the positives to begin with, Thermal Club ra rolled out the red carpet for this entire series and I think they should be commended for putting on an event that I think is worthy of the $500 ticket price that they were asking. Um, the sight lines, great uh, for every spectator, access unbeatable. Uh, food, free. Drinks, free. Um, you get to feel like you're a part of, you know, very much a part of this paddock. And so that's what you're paying for, for an entire weekend, by the way. Some people were confused when I said it was $500. It's $500 for the weekend. So um, it was originally $2,000. That was completely the wrong price. Way too much money. $500, I think it's right in that sweet spot of your access, uh, that you're getting the free stuff that you're getting. Makes a lot of sense. Um, but again, like I said off the top, this event continues to be, you know, marketed as made for TV. It's it's everywhere. And was that a good TV product? The you know, honest question. I don't think it was. Uh, especially that first, uh, the, the, the first stage, I guess we'll, we'll just call it, we'll just use the NASCAR terminology because we had a halftime break today. The first stage of the finale, the first 10 laps, he had a lot of guys saving. Uh, some people not knowing the rules. Pietro Fittipaldi was tossed from the race for uh, underfueling his car. That was a no-no. Did anyone really understand or know the rules? I I didn't. And you know, I, I supposedly cover this series for a living, right? So um, there were there were some things that were odd about the the procedure. I think the heat races were kind of were kind of 
were pretty interesting. I thought it was fun to see the drivers racing uh, to get in. I mean, obviously, if you've ever been to an open wheel, a dirt race, or even like a sprint car, Silver Crown race, they do that stuff. And it's cool. I like it. I like that style of racing. Does it work on a, does it totally translate on a road course? Uh, probably not. Um, but I think my, my suggestion would be, um, I don't think the finale should be 20 laps. I think it should be 10. And I think you should use the tires that you used in the heat race to uh, transfer to the main. So essentially, it is one race between the two heat races, but you don't ever have to change tires. And I think that was, I think the, cha the tire change was what kind of screwed this up because everybody in that first stint, not everybody, but a whole lot of drivers were using uh, a very discretionary uh, tire management. And if you're making a made for TV event, you can't have guys putting around 30 seconds off of the pace. Now the strategy was interesting for guys like Colton Herta, guys like Augustine Canapino, who we heard from earlier, uh, who tried something different, tried to save tires and tried to do something, and it paid off for Herta. He got much higher in the money than he would have ended up, you know, getting. So I, I just there was there's there's some things to like about this, and there's some things to not like about it. Um, I don't know how the teams are going to feel about it. We heard Roman Grosjean, uh, after he got taken out down here by Scott Dixon, you know, who's going to pay for my car? And, uh, you know, Roman Grosjean leaves here in a purse cash money race, $23,000 richer. But I guarantee you, when a wing costs $40,000 or whatever it is, um, you, you knock one front wing off during this race and it's over. Um, so. And, and, and not only that, you know, kind of Mother Nature intervened as well. This morning, uh, a, a dust storm ripped through the paddock and destroyed a whole bunch of tents uh, from the teams. Who's going to pay for that, right? Is that $23,000 worth of damage? So it's tough racing for prize money. I, like I said yesterday, I think this is better probably preseason. Um, it makes more sense as a bit of a teaser for uh, the IndyCar season, and it gives everybody uh, a test day, have media day out here, take all the pictures, you know, do all that stuff. I think that's a good idea. Um, but I think if they're going to do a race, they're going to have to figure out probably a better format. And understandably, IndyCar hasn't run a non-points race since 2008, and really that should have been a championship event. It was run to the exact same rules that the rest of the 2008 season was run to. Um, you know, and, and then you're going back to the Marlboro Challenge, like I said yesterday, um, to find find a race that's similar. That was held at Laguna Seca and Nazareth, and um, those are tracks that we have a lot of data on. We understand what the racing is going to be like, um, and obviously we didn't understand what the racing was going to be like here. Um, tires for the second weekend and really just conservation racing uh, we've seen in IndyCar. I don't think it's just, that's just a thermal, that is not just a thermal problem, I should say. Uh, wow, look at that big bird coming in. I just want to just show that off real quick. That's, uh, wow. Now, I'm not an aviation nerd by any stretch of the imagination. All I know is that that's a cool plane. That is a cool plane. And he's looking sketchy coming in. That looks like a turbulent flight. Well, if you hear a big boom behind me, you know what happened. Um, where was I? Oh, yeah. Um, you know, conservation has been the name of the game this entire time, uh, this entire season thus far. It was conservation of fuel at St. Pete. It's conservation of tires here at Thermal. Um, and we've yet to see an all-out, drag-out sprint. Um, now, nobody told Alex Pillow that. I think Alex Pillow continues to prove that he is one of the best drivers, if not the best driver in the series, and will be for a long time. Uh, it was interesting and entertaining that Scott Dixon got bounced, that, uh, that Will Power got bounced, that Pato Award got bounced. Um, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm interested to see what the public perception is, because at least during the race, people were being very negative, and I don't necessarily blame them. Like I said, I think the big, the big folly that this race had was they overhyped it. Like I said yesterday, I think you gotta you gotta promote this as a test with a race, and if it's a preseason tune-up, that makes it even better, because then there's no expectations. It's like, hey, you know, we're racing in February. That's cool. And some people said that thermal's too cold in February. Maybe that's the case. I don't know. Um, we'll just have to wait and see. I mean, if the IndyCar season doesn't start till the middle of March anyway, do it do it March first. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, you know, I, we'll see what happens over the next 12 months. I'm very curious to hear 
uh, as the weeks and months go on what the paddock thinks of this. Uh, I think that from a from a sponsorship, from a schmoozing standpoint, from a fan standpoint, it's a pretty good deal. Uh, from a television standpoint, it's missing the mark. I think that's my that's my quick and dirty evaluation. Standing here in the pits at Thermal, ten minutes after the race end. So thank you guys so much for watching. This has been David Land on YouTube. Uh, Thank you guys, especially the members of the DL500 Club. I would not have been able to do any of this without you guys. Um, and uh, it's, the last month has really taken a lot out of me. I've just gotten sick. I don't know if you were able to tell this through the, through the video. Uh, I, think, I think I might be allergic to money, which is why I keep coming to IndyCar races and covering them. But, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> so hopefully by the time we get, uh, get around to the Indianapolis 500, and of course the test is in a couple of weeks, and, you know, I, my energy level is going to be through the roof. I cannot wait to see cars on the Indianapolis Oval again. Looks like it's going to be 35 cars. We're not quite sure on uh, the identity of the driver or team combination that the 35th is going to be. It's going to be something from Dale Coyne. We just don't know exactly what that's going to be yet. It's probably Catherine Legg, but there's some other drivers that have a chance of getting that seat. We'll see who's in the seat two and a half weeks from now when we cover uh, the Indy 500 Open Test. So thank you guys so much for watching as another plane flies over, and I'll see you in the next video.